So in most of the classrooms, if you're going to be live streaming, you're going to rely on the content you're sharing mostly on your computer. We'll talk about sharing document cameras and other things um, in a minute, as well as a microphone and a camera. This semester, the Department of I Division of IT is working to deploy one of three different camera solutions in our classrooms. The sort of most basic starter solution is a webcam. So for the those of you online, here is a standard webcam. Those of you in the room, <laughs> standard webcam. You may find this in your classroom, in which case it would be likely to be just sitting on top of the monitor in your room. As we're all now very familiar with the webcam, this would be both your microphone and your camera, but it's only going to pick up whatever direction it's pointing. So point it where you want it to pick up. That might be you sitting behind the instructor station. It might be you kind of wandering in the front of the room, or it might be your students, depending on what you want to do with it. This is only going to pick up a short range, so you can't walk too far if you're live streaming for your remote students to hear you. There are two other cameras that are more sophisticated, which I have here on the desk. The largest and easiest to see would be the meeting owl. It reminds me a lot of like an Amazon Alexa, right? It's kind of what it looks like. So this device is a microphone, speakerphone, and camera all in one. And the camera is a 360 camera. So here at the top, this dome picks up everything in a 360 degree radius. It also then automatically tracks the speaker and focuses on wherever sound is coming from. So if I were using this camera and I stood here, students remotely would see a 360 degree view at the top of my camera box, right? We're all used to our heads in the little boxes. But they would also see a focused in closer angle of wherever I was while I was talking. If someone else started talking, it would shift eventually. It takes a few words, a few seconds, but it will shift to them and show them instead. All of that happens automatically. It has a wider range. It'll pick up about a 20 foot range, which means in a classroom like this, probably this row and the next row would be heard pretty well. The students would be heard by the remote ones. Those who decided to sit where Ursula was are probably not going to be heard as well by your remote students. Yes. So, uh, I mean, I decided technology has been that for mm -hmm. a while now. You can actually link two mean towns together. Oh, great. Um, and what we've done in engineering is not really level. So, mm -hmm. uh, there may be some advances. It's excellent technology, owlabs.com. Two towns. So, it's owlabs.com. For those of you who. Yeah. For those of you online who probably couldn't hear because my phone can't pick up that far, <laughs> that's why we're not streaming classes from our phones as a first choice. Uh, Dean Peterson pointed out that you can actually combine two owls, string them together to get more range and to have more, um, hang them from the ceiling is what they're doing in engineering. And then Ursula pointed out that there's an app you can download on your phone that lets you control where the owl looks a little bit more so it can find you instead of kind of automatically tracking via sound. So those would be in some of our rooms. Unfortunately, they do cost about a thousand dollars. And so the university couldn't put one in every classroom. Hence, some of the rooms got the regular webcam. The other solution that the Division of IT is just adding this semester is this smaller camera. Here, I'll pick it up for everyone in the room real quickly. On a, a slender stock. But again, it has a camera on top that's a dome. This is what they're referring to as a desktop 360 camera. It's very similar to the OWL camera in that it picks up a 360 view. It's not a speakerphone, 
So you'd use the classroom speakers for playing a video or for remote students to be heard in the room. And it doesn't follow the speaker the same way that the OWL Lab does. Instead, this one has static views that you can select, and we'll look at that in a minute, so that you can choose what view you want your remote students to see. It also acts as a microphone. All three of these do. So the simplicity when you're setting up a live streaming session is your camera and your microphone match. <laughs> so that works out fairly well for you and that makes it easier to set up in your session. Some of our classrooms, I don't believe any in Barcima, but some across campus have slightly more sophisticated setups. The way to find out what is in your room is to go to the classroom's webpage. So for those of you online, I'll stick you in front of the monitor, but you can also just go to go.niu.edu slash classroom. That'll be the best way to get to see the status of your classroom and what is in that classroom. So I'll show you two, two different things you should look at. The first one, if I scroll down, is the dashboard. The classroom technology team from Do It is actually installing things in classrooms still as we speak. So you can check to see the status of your room. Essentially, is my room done yet on this dashboard? So let's look up. We're in Barcima Hall. And I'm going to sort by room. We're in Barcima Hall 240. This room is essentially ready for use, with the one exception that Kelsey told us that the monitor hasn't been updated because they couldn't unlock it. Uh, but across Barcima, you'll see that some of them 110, 111, 113, 233, 231. These rooms are still being worked on. So if you go into that room today and you don't find a camera or you're not sure where, why there isn't, it says it should have a 360 and it's not here. The dashboard will tell you it's still in progress and you should wait until, you, um, until it's done to know for sure what's going to be there or to test it out. You can also look to see exactly what is in your classroom, what inventory, what technology is there using Find My Classroom. So let's look up. Um, Sandy, what rooms did you say you were in? All right, let's look in 300. So 300 is going to have air conditioning. That's great. That's always reassuring. <laughs> Yay! Um, but most importantly here at the bottom, it tells us that it's going to have a camera meeting owl pro. So 300 will have this one. Whereas if you look up, um, let's see what 110 has. One ten is going to have the desktop 360 camera, so it'll have this smaller one here. So both rooms have a camera, that's good, and both rooms have a 360 camera of a sort, so you kind of know what your room is going to be like when you walk in. Any questions right now on general camera selection in these rooms? Great. I will tell you as well, so most of the rooms Many of the rooms will say they have a document camera. I would be suspicious. I would not rely on having a document camera until you've tested it out because some of them are there, but they're old and they were meant to be replaced, but they didn't come in in time. So they're not going to be in probably halfway through the semester. They may not be able to deploy them at that point. Either way, old, outdated document cameras that aren't functioning. Uh, or they, they turn on like this one did, but they're not actually hooked up to anything anymore once they started upgrading the rooms. So if your classroom says it has a document camera, which 110 doesn't, but 300 did, I would recommend testing it before you assume that you can use it. You'll also see here 110 mentions a desktop digital whiteboard. So the desktop digital whiteboard is the pen touch monitor. The reason why that most of the rooms that the, the Division of IT has upgraded has a desktop digital whiteboard now is because none of these cameras do a great job of picking up a marker board. There's usually too much glare, too much shine, and at the angle that they're at, they don't get a high enough definition uh, view of the board for students who are remote to be able to see it. Not to mention, I don't even see markers here, if your marker's faded, it's going to be even worse. So the desktop digital whiteboard 
means that when you're streaming, you can use a whiteboard on the monitor and a digital pen to write on the marker board the way you would hear, but to do it on the monitor. That way you can project it for your students in the room and for your students who are remote. The easiest way to do that that I have found is actually to use PowerPoints with some blank slides. And you can then write on PowerPoints with a pen touch. Or if you're in any of the web conferencing tools, they all have a built in whiteboard. Collaborate, Zoom and Teams all have a whiteboard you can launch in the session. And then that can be broadcast to both your in person and remote students. Those are probably the most important things to take away from that inventory list. So just a quick question on that. I used that last year, that Teams mm -hmm. board. Capturing it, how, how do we capture that? So like the notes that we put on there, some students said, can, can, can you save that and give it to me later? And Excellent. I Excellent question about capturing what you write. In a web conferencing tool, the easiest route is probably to share the recording of the session. Right, so that's an idea. Yeah. yeah. The other option for Teams specifically is once you've launched a whiteboard, that whiteboard is saved in your OneDrive. Okay. So you can actually find the whiteboard session basically and share that whiteboard directly to a oh, student. See, and then I can just said that they're done, they graduated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, good to know. Thank you. But, but you kind of have both of those options then okay. with the digital marker board. So for Zoom, Zoom has a built-in whiteboard tool. Mm -hmm. And so if you use that, it doesn't save the way that Teams does, where you could save the share the whiteboard directly, but you could share the recording and students could watch it in real time, basically. Okay. Yes, class share the recording. Teams, you could share the recording that whiteboard directly. Yep. You have a special pen. A regular pen on the monitor. There'll be a, a, a touch pen that goes with it, just a stylus. And it's usually either connected, it might be actually wired to the monitor, or if you have one that's not connected, they usually hide it by tucking it like on top of the computer in the cabinet below the desk. Okay. Dean Peterson. Yeah, so just like we were experimenting. Great, thank you. All right, so let's talk about what you do when you come into your classroom. If you're going to, you'll find somewhere on the desk a touch panel or a physical button box. If you see that, there'll be an on button or there's a touch panel. This one doesn't actually work. But if there was a touch panel, you would tap it and it would turn on. And then it would be something like just off. Uh, Right, power on. That would turn on the projector. It may lower the screen if you have an electronic screen. It may turn on other devices. You may find one of those in the classroom and you turn on, press on, and it doesn't do anything. That's because the room is in the process of being upgraded and they couldn't get all of the equipment in for that to start. So you may find just the in particular. That's what you need. But you may need to do one or the other. You don't find the uh, If you have a veggie projector, which is an upgrading, they put in one of the veggie projector. I have found that these remotes are for right angle. So I need to be in front of the So just do it. You may need to stand right in front of it. So I came in the room, turned on the projector, I've logged into the computer, 
And now my next step is probably to launch the whatever web conferencing tool I want to use. That's entirely up to you. So if you want to use Teams, if you want to use Collaborate, if you want to use Zoom, there are others. I would probably stick with those three. That's already enough choices for our students to have to deal with. And we all have, we've already adopted them at NIU, but the choice is yours. I would then launch the session that I'm going to use. So in this case, I'm going to, I'm going to come to Teams. I'm just going to meet now to start an ad hoc meeting. You would start the meeting you had scheduled. Or in Blackboard, I would join the session that I wanted to use in order to get started there. Again, with Zoom, you would do the same thing, but I didn't log into Zoom yet, and it would take me too long at this point to do so. So trust me. Once you're here, Collaborate will ask you to verify what camera or microphone you want to use. In this case, I actually have choices because I've hooked up more than one. So I have both a meeting owl and I have a J5 create meeting mic for my audio. The J5 is this guy. It actually says J5 right on the front. That's that little desktop 360 camera. So this is the J5. This one is the meeting owl. I can use either one. I'm going to demonstrate the J5 first because it has a little bit more configuration for us to do. Interaction with because um, I found that with recording internal video, internal audio, so that when I show the video, we'll talk about that. Then yeah, because that was yep, that was a hard list. <laughs> we will we will talk about that when we'll talk about that when we start talking about sharing content. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I have selected the J5 Create as my microphone. And then I'm going to also choose the J5 Create for my camera. And again, because I'm, I've hooked up both of them, you'll only have one, but I have two because I'm trying to demonstrate both. So I'll choose the J5 Create and say, yes, my video is working. Now that I very quickly Close Collaborate, because I'll do it again in a minute, and go to Teams. And in Teams, I can do the same thing. I'm going to choose my computer audio, and I can use these sliders to choose which microphone I want to have on. So we're going to go with the, I think the J5 Create is being, there it is, J5 Create, and J5 Create for the camera. Because I'm using that J5 Create that does not have a speaker. I can't choose it for my speaker in Teams. I'm going to choose the, the real tech. That's the normal sound card on the computer. Uh, so that's perfectly fine here. You won't have to make a choice probably if you don't have a meeting owl also hooked up because it wants to then find that. So don't worry too much about that. If I turn on my camera, and I will join the session. Create camera view. I said it's a 360. What we're seeing right now is the mode that I called the stack 360. It's basically dividing it into 180 degrees and then displaying that on the top and the bottom. You can choose the mode. You can leave it here. It's a great default. I kind of like students who are remote get to see the whole room then. But there are other options. So follow me for a minute, people who are online. They'll get a better view of this than you will, unfortunately. There is a mode button, small button right here, just next to the camera. So for those of you online, there's the mode button. The mode button determines what students remotely are going to see. So if I press mode, it brings a view on the camera or on the camera feed of all of the choices that are available. And you press mode repeatedly until you get to the one that you want. Select it. This is a panoramic 360. 
it's smaller. I don't think it's a great choice for our classrooms, but it is an option. The next one is a both a uh, 360 at the top and a focused view at the bottom. The focus view you adjust by using the black ring that surrounds the camera. It's actually a touch bar. So if I touch here, I can even slide my finger across it and you'll see that it changes the angle of the camera. So if I wanted to sit behind the instructor station and have the camera focus on me here, but still shows all the students what's in my room, I could use this view to do that. The next option is a double focused view. So here I could set one behind the instructor station and one of my class, again, using the touch bar to focus it. Or the last two actually operate in more of a traditional webcam view. So this one, I actually turn it so it faces forward like a regular webcam. So now I went from facing up to facing forward. And it picks up first a traditional like 90 degree camera view. So that's kind of what a regular webcam picks up. Or if I switch to the 120, you'll see it pops out to just a wider view. So a little bit bigger, you could get a wider classroom in the angle that way. At this point, it still has a broader camera range or microphone range than the webcam does, but it's basically operating like a regular webcam. I'm going to move it back up and put it back into the stacked 180. I think that's probably the easiest view to use. And if I get out of the way, <laughs> um, it's kind of a great. So at this point, my remote students could see me if I were staying back here, but I have some walk range. And then if I step out of this range, now I'm just in the bottom view instead of the top view. And then the students can see all of the other students in the class as well. That's the only additional configuration you would need to do with the J5 is choosing your camera view with that mode button on top. But like us, we like to walk around, right? Mm -hmm. So what would be the best way or easiest way for us to maneuver these things? I think this view is probably the best one for that because It'll pick me up here, and like I said, and I can turn this even a little bit. It's picking up a lot of the corner that I don't think it needs to. So here, now I get a little bit more range even to walk. But remember, if I walk over to the other side of the classroom, they're not going to hear me anymore remotely. So you do need to limit how far you walk, either in this direction or toward the back of the classroom. How far can you go to that side? I could probably go to, I would say about here. I might go further, but, but this is a good, I think a good place to stop. So normally you do not need to move this one, right? So somebody just put this position that they have used it, and yeah. Right, normally you wouldn't move this. You could move it to like, if I'd rather, it, there's as much far as it can go. <laughs> so. I could move it slightly down the desk. It was over here. Now it's over there. Yeah, um, the right. Yep. But if you have a longer extension cord, you can actually move that there. Isn't that better? Or uh, besides, I mean, like, it's, it's not because of the cord running across. And these are just USB. USB, my, my engineering team might tell me differently, doesn't do as well with longer. So you wouldn't want to put like an extension that ran through the ceiling and and run it that way. It'd be great to see how this looks. Okay. Sure. All right. Thank you. So uh, Ursula just went and got me a marker, so you, I can write on the marker board, and you'll be able to see what it looks like. Mm. She got me marker that doesn't work very well either. <laughs> they weren't sure if it was going to work. I have another one that I brought with me. This one works better. And it's still really hard to see. Oh, would the white sock help? 
Oh, where are the lights? Behind you. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> but good, good thoughts. So with this one, it's not going to pick up the marker board. If I switch my input, I can do that under device settings. I'm going to choose the meeting owl instead for my camera. The meeting owl takes a moment to warm up. And like I said, it's sorry, I'm still not oh, sorry, Siri. <laughs> this is trying to find me it kind of adjusted. It looks a little better. It's a little better. And if, notice here it is reversed. That's because this is my preview of the video. My students would not see it reversed. My preview of it, of my own video is reversed. Uh, you don't have to suddenly start learning how to write backwards. <laughs> so here, this one's a little bit better, but the problem with the meeting owl, unless I've configured the app, it's gonna follow me. So if I walk down here to write, uh, it will follow me. Yeah. And over here, it doesn't pick up quite as well because of the angle. And if I move back away, now students who are remote can't see that anyhow once it refocuses on me. So the meeting all picks up a little better, but again, because of how it focuses, it's not a great option for picking up the marker board. Yeah, good, good demonstration to have though. All right, so now we've seen the. I'm sorry, are you in team now or what? Right now I'm in teams. Yep. So the 360 camera, we've seen the meeting owl camera. I'm going to stop my camera for now. And let's talk about sharing content. So the easiest content to share is always going to be something that's on the desktop because we're using a desktop web conferencing software. So if I had PowerPoint or if I wanted to share a website, you would do it exactly the same way you've been doing it for a year if you're holding synchronous online sessions. In Teams, I would share content. Unless there's a reason not to, I recommend just sharing your screen. That's usually the most efficient way. That way, if you're switching between PowerPoint and uh, a YouTube video or if you want to show Blackboard or whatever, another software program, they're all right here. Ursula mentioned if you're playing a video and you want your remote students to hear the audio from that video, there's a tiny little toggle up here in the corner that says include computer sound. In Teams, this is what shares the audio that would play over your speakers to your remote students. In Collaborate, if I jump back into a session, Mm -hmm. That's the one you use to make sure that in the recording it as well gets recorded, right? Right. Okay. Yep. That that puts it into both what you're broadcasting and what you're recording. In Collaborate, if I share my application or screen, there's a tiny little checkbox here that says share audio. There's a similar slider in Zoom when you go to share your screen that says include audio, I think is what there says. What if you use what if I use the Chrome tab here to share? Or, oh, here, Chrome tab. That lets me pick a specific tab instead of sharing my whole screen or instead of sharing a program. So in Collaborate, I could share my entire screen. I could share a specific window, like a specific application I had running, or I can share a Chrome tab, which would let me share specifically my Blackboard tab or a YouTube tab. I would be cautious with that because it, you have a tendency to one thing and then just switch a tab and forget that you're not sharing your whole screen mm -hmm. and your remote students then won't see it. But you, won't share the audio the same but you would share audio the same way. Yes. Question over here. Yeah. What exactly is Collaborate? Is that something that's built into Blackboard or is that independent? So Collaborate is built into Blackboard. It's just another web conferencing tool. Okay. Um, so it's it's like Zoom, but it integrates and neither Zoom or Teams does, okay. but it has a different feature set than uh, either of those do. So if you're familiar with one, for now, I would probably stick with what you know. Uh, that will be the problem. Okay, um, and just thinking from a standpoint of like trying to share screens, um, mm -hmm. information, uh, I heard someone back here like, we try to share data or something with students, maybe looking for the ease of it. Is it easier 
to like get the documents and, and content to the students over collaborate as opposed to Teams and Zoom? No, I wouldn't say so. I think okay. they're all pretty similar. The one thing that Zoom and Teams or Zoom and Collaborate both allow you to do that Teams doesn't is to share two video feeds at the same time. So in Collaborate, I can, if I come back here, I can turn on my camera and I'll choose a webcam. Great, I picked, I think the J5. That's what I had already selected. Okay. But then under share, I can choose to share a camera and I could choose the Meeting Owl Pro, for example. Here, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? I'm doing this to show that you can do it. It doesn't make sense to do it in this particular context, but when you use that share camera, your camera feed and collaborate then takes up the whole screen. Collaborate privileges content over webcam. Uh, so here, my camera now stays large in collaborate and it fills the screen and the other video can kind of fill in around it. The reason you would do this in classrooms where the document camera is hooked up, this one again, if you're teaching in this room, this one is not hooked up. You'll have either an Inogeny or a Mirabox camera. That is what feeds the document camera into the computer so that you could show it on screen and you could broadcast it to your remote students. So if you're wanting to use the document camera in Collaborate or in Zoom, you can actually share the document camera and the webcam that's showing students you or the classroom at the same time. In Teams, you have to choose. So in Teams, if you shared the document camera using either Inogeny or Mirabox, you would not also be able to show your remote students yourself because you don't have that choice to do two cameras. So what will be recorded? What will be recorded? Great question. In Collaborate, what is recorded is if you have content shared, Collaborate records the content. Okay. And if you're not sharing content, then it shows, it records the video. Zoom records your content and a video if you've set that up in your Zoom account. And Teams, I believe, records only the content as well. So that's where, in some cases, I, you know, I do say choose the tool that you're most familiar with, but there are obviously distinctions what each tool is capable of and how it makes choices. I think the Blackboard Collaborate, the best thing is that it will just upload the recordings automatically. You don't have to worry about it, right? So all of them do record to the cloud and can. Correct. In um, in Teams or Zoom, you might have to do more to share it with your students. Correct. Collaborate, they're a little hard to find, so you have to tell students where to find it. <laughs> so again, no perfect solution. Mike, I think I saw a question come in from online. Did Samantha have a question there? Uh, yeah. Yes, so that is the, I think I can get into the chat for the session, maybe. That is the go.niu.edu slash classrooms. So I've answered a lot of questions in the room. Let me pause and see if there are any other questions online yet. Either via text chat or if you want to turn on your microphone. All right, not seeing any yet. So if you are online and you want to ask a question, raise your hand or put something in the text chat. So I make sure that I get your questions answered. One of the problems with live streaming is you're going to always tend to privilege your interactions with your in-person students because they're right here and you'll forget that you have remote students. So that's where having Mike here, who's also in the session, who can speak up if something's going on or could speak up and tell me that my camera's pointed the wrong way or my online students can't hear me is really helpful. He's a colleague. I could ask him to be here to help me, but if you're in your class, even just asking the students to also sign into the online session so that they can help with your online students is really helpful. Um, just make sure that they keep their sound off on their computer or you'll start a feedback loop. Sandy, you had a question in the room. Yeah, so I need to Yes. So if, if you're using the document camera in Collaborate, I would use the share camera in order to display that. If you just share it as your webcam, 
it's going to be a, a teeny tiny little view that the remote students can't see. Whereas if you use the share camera using the, the panel on the left and the right, then it'll fill your content screen like your PowerPoint slides would have. And then because in most of these rooms now, the document cameras aren't hooked up to the projector, you would keep your collaborate session or your Zoom or your team session on the projector screen because that's how your students in the room are going to see it as well. Does that make sense? <laughs> Other questions here? What's the expectation? Yeah. Like we, we talk about in person class, right? Starting next week. And then assuming like all the students are in here, we don't have to do streaming. You do not. And then once a student start getting sick and they have to stay away for 14 days and that's when the streaming become necessary, I guess. So the what I would suggest and then there is no requirement that you live stream. There is, I think, an expectation that you work with a student who can't be in class in order to help them continue their their learning for the semester. That doesn't necessarily mean you jump to live stream. That might mean that you find alternative resources for them. You meet with them individually. There are other options you can try. You don't have to automatically live stream because a student is going to be remote. My you may want is, to. My plan is to record it. And then the student who can't be there can then watch the video, can watch the video of the session. And then, you know, and then if they have any questions or any issues, then they can get back in touch with me. Because all I did was live streaming last year. It was a pain in the butt. So, so when you say recorded it, it's yeah. easier when we all stay home and sit in front of the computer and then do the, the, the uh, collaborate and record. But now we are in the classroom. Yep. Now you walk in the wrong. Yep. It, it, so the cameras follow you. The cameras are going to be following you. So you set up a team event or yes. collaborate every, regardless. Every time, every session, I set up a team event. And then, can we well, use Blackboard to collaborate? Yes, you can do the same thing. And we recorded it. Yes. So and effectively, you you're off. using the same tools as you would be live streaming, but you're recording it and not having the remote students join at the same time. Right. It's it's essentially like a one way. Correct. It's a le lecture capture at that point, yep. which can be easier than live streaming because you don't have remote students who are there at that moment. Right. You do still need to think about what's on my screen, what's right. being recorded. That's right. yeah. And, and so the sound, would the sound be picked up, right? And yes. then the, as long as you can turn on your microphone, the, the J5 or the meeting owl or the webcam, whatever's in your room, the sound will be picked up then. The, like I said, the benefit to recording, you're not trying to work with two sets of students at the same right. time, but you are still trying to manage the technology for recording and not just for, for teaching the students in the room. But it can be a lot easier for you to manage than to record right. instead of managing this, the live stream. Yeah, so the li so what happened last year, it, I, I wasn't just, so I had students in the classroom, I had students everywhere else all over the world, it seemed like some of them. Um, <laughs> and so trying to you know, work in class on and then, and then record as well, because some students weren't able to even do the remote. So I just, by the end of the year, I said, okay, I'm just recording now. And so then if anybody needed to watch that and then take notes, they could take notes. And then if they had any questions, once they viewed the video, the recording, then they could you know, contact me and then I could work with them individually. Mm -hmm. And that turned out to be a lot easier to manage um, and I did, I did at one point just bring in a, because um, we didn't have all of that. I had the owl, but not the other one. Um, I brought in a um, laptop that I would use on a, on a rolling, use in a, in that, a rolling podium, and I would just bring that with me as I went across the board if I wrote on the board, mm -hmm. um, because you saw that the camera's not as good. So that's how I wound up doing it, and then then the students ask, well, can you send me the notes? <laughs> and they're like, I, you know, I'm, I'm at my limit at this point. But now I know I can send the notes. If you use the whiteboard in Teams. Right. right. Yeah, just Ursula, you could do recording. It only records your whatever movement yes. in the classroom. Yes. My point is, you could also do some demonstration in the computer. 
but you will now get reported for that part. So, so yeah, that you, you would use the application share. Right. Right. You would share your desktop, and then that gets part of the recording instead. Yes. So you have to change it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. so, so can I clarify, kind of follow up? So when I go come into the class, usually I would just, let's say, play the PowerPoint slide. Mm -hmm. But then, so I have to turn on the Blackboard Collaborate and share the screen, yeah. then yeah. record it, and I should be fine. Yep. Everything will be captured. Yep. Once you turn, once you're in, so to, to kind of back up and go through the process one one more time, I suppose if I'm going to talk, I might as well put myself on camera. Uh, so to, to go through it end to end, you walk in the room, turn on the projector, start your session, turn on your camera and microphone, and share whatever you're going to share. At that point, if you're not changing from, you have to show the, the whiteboard or start a digital whiteboard, or you can walk away and ignore it. Once you've got your content shared and your application share, your microphone and camera on, and your recording started. Uh, the one other thing I wanted to point out really quickly, because and then we'll, I know we have a couple more questions. I did mention having a, a whiteboard. So in Teams, now that I have my share panel open, one of the options is Microsoft Whiteboard. This is going to be terrible because the pen monitor is not here yet, although it will be. But once this opens, Normally I would have a pen. Instead here, I can use my mouse. I'll just scribble. And you can draw right on here. And then this is infinitely uh, sized, so I can just move it out of the way and start a new section when I need to. And then as I told Ursula, this is then shared, saved in your OneDrive. You can get to the whiteboard directly if you wanted to. In Collaborate, I can share, instead of sharing my camera, I can share a blank whiteboard. And when I share a blank whiteboard, there is, by the way, Collaborate has a new, white, a new whiteboard tool set. If it loads, I might be doing too much on this computer at this point. <laughs> we'll see if it comes in. But it has tools that are a little bit more intuitive and easier to use. And you would grab the pen. Yeah, it will refresh. Um, and you can grab the pen then, and there it goes. Right, started right up. So I can write on here. I can change the color. I can switch to different tools. I can draw a shape. Lots of new tools here. Um, in Collaborate for the whiteboard that weren't there before. It still works the same way that Zoom would, that Teams would. With the exception in Teams and or in Zoom and Collaborate, I can't save it. Whereas in Teams, I get it saved as separate. And but if it's been recorded, then that's. If, if it's been recorded, the recording will be there. All right, so questions. I know you had a question, right? No, no. Okay, perfect. Sandy, you had a question. In Collaborate? Okay. Right. No, if you share, let me come back to my sharing options and collaborate. If I share camera, that's where I can choose one of the cameras that's connected to the computer. So meeting L or J5, or if you're in a room with a document camera that's hooked up, the Inageni or the Mira box also work as cameras because of it's a document camera. So that would be if you wanted to use a document camera and collaborate, I would use the share camera in order to pull that in. Right, yes, if when you're done with the document camera, you would need to switch what you were sharing. So if you needed to switch back to your PowerPoint, for example, or just back to nothing, so just the, the webcam showing you and your students, you would switch it back, yes. Great questions. So it won't show both. It won't, collaborate would show both, but it's still worth, if you're not using the document camera, instead of leaving it up blank, it's still worth turning it off at least. So that that's not out there distracting your students. But you don't have to if you're not sharing anything new. That's okay too. Question here? I have a question about like what happens in the teams. So I use Zoom, mm -hmm. and after I tried it out, it's like a little through blackboard. It's fairly easy. With like some the live streaming issues coming in, is there a recommendation like for your end? Because you're the first one gonna call. Yeah. 
what <laughs> department on uh, which like what the support is like is there more knowledge like more knowledge based on even teams is that like the way to go or more resources or is so I will say we've been supporting Collaborate the longest of any right. of the three. Um, Zoom, we've been working with probably the shortest, right. but it's also one of the easier ones. So I, that's why I say it's really kind of up to you. Okay. It may take a little more investigation if we're not as familiar with something in teams you're trying to do that we haven't seen before. Okay. But we have worked with all of them. We have our partners in Do It who can help us out as well. So it really does come down to what are you most comfortable with? What will you be the most confident with? And what can you use with the most facility? And then my, my second kind of question is breakout rooms. Yes. If you're doing something with like live streaming, mm -hmm. I won't do that. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. with like you have people in the classroom and then you have people online. How does that kind of work? So in that case, I recommend having the people online be, potentially if you only have a few, be their own breakout. Mm -hmm. If you have more than that, you may need to actually put them in breakout rooms, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the size of the groups that you want working together. If you only have one person remote, that's where I would find, like, if I had one person remote, I take the four of you, could you please log into the session, have them join your, your cluster uh, so that they can be a part of the conversation. You can also think about if you have an activity in class and you have students remote, you're not broadcasting, you're recording, think about what they might do instead. Maybe they write a short reflection on what the discussion should have been, or if they watch the recording and they heard one of the you recorded one of the group's conversations. They could almost be a, a fishbowl where they respond to what that group had discussed, add something new to the discussion that wasn't already there. Again, for students who are remote because of a medical issue, the, you don't have to try to integrate them fully into the classroom. You need to ensure they have a, a rigorous educational experience. It may be alternative at that point, but it needs to accomplish the same learning goals even if it's in maybe a slightly different way. And you can customize to that student what they need. With one, that's not too bad. If you end up with 40, then that's going to obviously be a lot more work, but that that's within your, your control. One last question, I think, before I wanna shut things off. I, um, I have several speakers coming to my class through the mm -hmm. semester, and some express the uh, will, I mean, the, 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 they want to just do the remote, the virtual yeah. thing. So how does that work? I'm thinking that should I just ask all the students not to come to class, just stay in front of their computer at home to do that, or they should all sit in the classroom and then we are watching the speakers. And then does that matter which one is easier? I don't know that it matters which one you would choose. Both of them work really well. Um, and I don't know that there's a policy that would dictate that said you had to bring your in-person students even though there was a, a remote speaker. They could stay home for that class and meet remotely, but if you'd rather have the, if the speakers like half a class, and you have more activities you want them to do in person, have them come in, put the speaker on the, the screen and have those conversations. But if the speaker talks to us virtually and then I have a student in the classroom and then some student at home, that means mm -hmm. that's kind of very complicated, right? Three way streaming. It, it's actually easier than you think because the remote speaker is just going to speak. You have the, can the questions from the students in person, the students remote connect to the exact same session. And so it's, it sounds complicated, but the, the beauty of the web conferencing tool is it handles all of those connections without you having to do anything more. The main thing, Tim, is if you do that, um, make sure that you're monitoring chat. So for the yep. remote question, it's easier if they ask it in the chat. I mean, you saw that yesterday. Yeah. You know how that went. So the best thing to do is to have a chat open so then you can just ask the uh, speaker here the question. Or mm -hmm. my speaker last year, she actually had her chat open. They mm -hmm. use Teams at p and so she was very easy with that. And so she just, the, as they asked the students ask questions, they she, they put them in the chat and she just answered them. Mm -hmm. She monitored herself. If, if you have more questions, because I do want to make sure anyone who needs to go or just wants to go <laughs> is the right to do, reach out to us at cital at niu.edu. That's our email address for our center. We're happy to talk with you one-on-one -on -one or answer any other questions you have via email even, um, or a web conferencing session. Whatever we need to do to help you feel confident and ready to start. So if you'd like to go, thank you. If you have a few more questions and want to talk to us and be one-on-one, I'm happy to do so. For those of you online, I will stop the recording.